Oh, this box is so heavy. Apple, amazing box. It's here, officially. It's the new Mac Pro 2019. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, what do we have here? It's a brand spanking new 2019 Mac Pro with touch, no touch bar. All right, this isn't a Mac Pro if you couldn't guess, but we are gonna be ordering one today. That's right. We're gonna be saving everyone who watches this video 75,000 Australian dollars on the Mac Pro 2019. That's right, the fully spec'd out version with no monitor, no friggin' monitor is 85,000 Australian dollars. Now the first thing you guys should do when you go to the Mac Pro page, you can see right there, save with business pricing, sign up now. If you sign up to that, you actually will get zero discount. So yeah, thanks for that. But apparently if you sign up and you purchase loads of them they will give you discounts in future but anyway let's go through the specifications of this machine and there is differences in this chip so first let's look at the processors right here look at that you can go all the way up to a 28 core xeon w cpu and there is a difference between these cpu configurations for example the base 8 core edition only supports ram of 2666 megahertz obsolete obsolete out of date so the new system the base model has slower ram than the latest 16 inch macbook pro so if you want that slow ram stick to the 8 core version however if you want the good ram you got to go for at least the 12 core edition but but my friends are telling you right now this machine apparently it is fully upgradable what that means is it means you can purchase a CPU directly from vendors and upgrade the system yourself and save the Apple tax. Now let's look how much Apple tax they are charging right now. If you wanna go between the eight core edition all the way to the 28 core edition, Apple are charging you $11,000, 11,000. 200 Australian dollars and to be honest with you it's not that bad because RRP it is about $11,000 for that chip of course we are forgetting that you need to get rid of the 8 core CPU to get that chip and there's also third party vendors that will sell that chip slightly cheaper so you can save yourself a couple of grand upgrading it yourself but I mean you can get Apple Care with this Apple Care is only $300 and that will cover your CPU for three years it's it's a it's an alright deal this one God forbid, that's a good deal. And if you do do that crazy upgrade, look what happens to the price. Boom, shakalaka, 21,200 AUD. And that means we are within our 30,000 instant asset write-off as a small business. So get yourself an ABN, get yourself an accountant or do it yourself. And you can instantly write off this purchase, 28 cores. Myself, me, I, I'm gonna go with the eight core. I know you get slower RAM modules and all that stuff. We're gonna cover this in this video, but I don't need 28 cores right now. The benefits of 28 cores, you're gonna get faster rendering, 3D. You're gonna get faster compilation. Xcode kinda of like compiles fast enough for my kind of projects, unless you're building like Firefox or Chrome. Chrome, man, that takes forever on this computer and you need 120 gigabytes of space. Google, what the hell kind of spying are you doing? 120 gigabytes just to build Chrome. Yeah, unless you're gonna be building Chrome or something super heavy, Unreal Engine, that kind of stuff. Eight cores should be fine. And the base eight core, it goes 3.5 gigahertz of speed as its base. My fellow over here, its base clock is 2.3 and it hits that level and boosts up to like three and yeah, around three. So. 3.5 at base, boosting up to four gigahertz. It's gonna get better performance than a MacBook Pro. Don't laugh at me, okay? It's uh, 10 grand, still expensive. Anyway, let's go on to the next section, and that is memory. And we've already spoken that you need the upgraded processor in order to get the faster memory. So, interestingly enough, if you get a slightly upgraded processor, look, the 32 gigabytes RAM is still DDR4 ECC. I assume you're gonna be getting the faster version of the 32 gigabytes RAM when you get the faster processor. Whereas with the slow processor, same price, you're gonna be getting slower RAM. So just know if you are gonna to upgrade to the 12 core, it's a good deal. And you'll also be getting, fingers crossed, unless Apple do something dodgy, you should be getting faster RAM over here for free or as part of the included price of the package. Now, let's see how much this RAM stuff costs. We want to go one and a half terabytes. Okay, we don't want to do that because one and a half terabytes is going to cost us way too much, but 
If you want one and a half terabytes, you're gonna have to get at least a 24 core or a 28 core as part of this package. I'm sticking to 32 gigabytes RAM. You guys can upgrade slightly more. I suggest because RAM is readily available from most computer parts, you're better off just buying it from a third party vendor and just upgrading it yourself. So with me, I'm sticking to the 32 gigabytes RAM and jump into the next section and this is graphics cards. And once again, great news, graphics cards, they are upgradable. You are no longer forced to pick an AMD, or maybe you still need to pick AMD, but you're no longer forced to get an Apple graphics card. You got options of the Radeon Pro Vega 2, Vega 2 Duo, or two Vega 2s. And interestingly enough, you can get two Vega 2s for the price of one Vega 2 Duo. And apparently they run the same. Personally, if I wanted to upgrade to the Vega 2, I'd probably get the Duo maybe, because that would use up one slot, whereas if you get two Vega 2s, you're using up two slots. Is that right? Someone correct me in the comment section below. But myself personally, I'm sticking to the 580X, and there's a reason for this. Graphics cards, they're readily available from third parties. I got a Vega 64 on the cheap, online. There's plenty of graphics cards out there, and AMD should be releasing faster graphics cards in the next month or so. so May I suggest buy a graphics card third party and you can slot it in as easy as you don't need to get it from Apple. Or maybe you do, maybe you want that luxury experience. I mean, the Vega 2 Duo, it's got, was it, 64 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. It's got teraflops. Again, sounds good, but will you get the drivers in applications to support that niche? All right, let's look at storage. And storage, remember, it's gonna be encrypted by the T2 chip, which means if you wanna install Linux, you won't have access to the SSD. So the base one is 256 gigabytes, probably go for that. I mean, upgrading it to just one terabyte will cost you 640 Australian dollars. For that price, I can get a two terabyte fast PCIe 4 NVMe. Obviously PCIe 4 won't work on this, but anyway, you can get NVMe two terabyte SSD. And the great thing about getting an SSD from a third party is that they give you not one year warranty, not two years warranty, not three years warranty, but five year warranties. That's right, the Samsung gives you five years, Seeker gives you five years, all of them give you five, well anyone reputable will give you five years of warranty. So I'd rather get it from a five year warranty kind of guy rather than Apple's basic one year or with Apple Care three years. Better off getting it from third parties. All right, saving you money right here. Look at that, we're still on the 9999, 9999. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. This is called Apple Afterburner. Now this guy should help with video editing. And I was excited about this card. I was like, whoa, it's gonna speed on my FCPX Pro. It's gonna make it amazing. But it's one thing you need to know. And that one thing is, it only is for ProRes and ProRes Roar. I don't use ProRes. I use HEVC and I use H.264. All right, Apple does in Final Cut Pro render out to ProRes for background rendering. I never use background rendering. It always slows down my system. Maybe it's Mac Pro. I will use background rendering, but the price, look at it right there. The price is 3,200, 3, 3,200. 3, it might be worth it. Maybe I'll have to test it out to find out. Personally, I think a Mac Pro on its own should be able to do some good damage for the stuff I use. If you guys get the Afterburner card, let me know how it works for you. Is it worth 3,200 Australian dollars? The good thing about it is Apple are going to be selling it individually on their app store right here. You can buy it on the store and it's also 3,200. You're not making a saving by buying it with the machine. In fact, you're getting one less box to unbox. It's going to be pre-slotted in. You want the experience of opening up the box and slotting it in yourself. So I will probably just hold back on this one for now, I think. I would hope so. A $10,000 machine should be able to do some good damage without an afterburner card. And uh, I'm a bit scared of proprietary hardware, but let's see how it goes. Afterburner, are you getting one? Let me know. All right, this is where it happens. Do you want grills and wheels with your Mac Pro? Look, 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 look at this. I'm having to drag this Mac Pro in and out. It's such a pain. If only it had wheels. If only I can just glide it. Well, you can get wheels, 640 Australian dollars. I have carpets in this place, 
so wheels are not appropriate. So I'm gonna be skipping on the option and personally I think it looks better on the stands. Do you get the legs and the wheels? If you get the wheels or do they take away the stands and screw you over? We don't know. All right, now we're gonna be doing the fun stuff, the magic mouse or the trackpad. Get both, they're, they're, they're both useful. Me and my workflow, I'm always using a trackpad on my MacBook Pro and the Magic Mouse it is such a delight having both of them. I suggest get both. The only thing I say is you get a full size keyboard with the Mac Pro. So it does mean you have to space out your hands, get used to that kind of action, but it's, it's good. And considering, you know, you get Apple Care with this stuff to replace any sort of damage where a typical warranty is one year, it's a good deal. Now, Keyboard, you get to learn more. That's it, that is it. We have upgraded our system and uh, I'm not gonna get both. I'm just gonna get a trackpad because I already got a mouse. And look, 10,069, our favorite numbers in the history world, 10,0069. That is the deal. We've saved ourselves $75,000 on the fully specced out Mac Pro and we haven't even got a monitor. Hope you guys found this video insanely very useful for the amazing Mac Pro experience you're about to get unleashed on yourselves. Which Mac Pro configuration are you guys getting hell out there? And please, because everyone I have spoken to wants to know why the hell are you buying this system? Just let me know in the comment section below and I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Wow, Mac Pro, remote control, fan mode, idle, the future.